exist, okay? Um, wait, let's practice your surprise sound. Oh. I love you people. <laughs> All right, so anyway, I can't believe that, like, on cue, you can just do that. Let's try it again. Oh. That's really good, thank you. All right. Wow, it's gonna be a good cruise, Morris. <laughs> All right, um, anyway, uh, after we do the photos, assuming he can do them, we'll do the photos with Mr. Agam, and then I'll let you know when to go and board the buses. Donna will actually stand outside each bus and take off your names as you get on the bus. Again, I know this is tedious, but we do it every week, and I'm telling you, this is the best way to make sure that we don't leave anyone here in the hotel. So um, again, please cooperate with us. So we'll ask you to stay up on this level until we call you down, and we'll give you plenty of time to use the elevators so that you can get down and go to the uh, bus that way. Um, then we'll load the buses one at a time, and then after we've uh, loaded the buses, both of them, um, then I'll go on and make announcements on both buses, and then we'll head off. So the moral of that story is we quite often have people literally push to be the first person on the bus. That just means you'll be sitting on a hot bus. So um, please, folks, if you'll just uh, let us call you out, that's the best way to go about it. Then we'll head over to the ship, and allegedly, uh, they're going to send some of the officers out to meet us and bring us. Uh, we'll go through security like everybody else, but then they'll put us in special lines, or at least that is the plan. Um, anyway, once we get on the ship, we'll have time to relax this afternoon, and then uh, we'll get back together tonight at 6 p.m. and 6 p.m. and 6 p.m. tonight. Tonight we're on at 6 p.m., uh, and tonight we're in Princess Live. At what time? 6 p.m. And you're going to want to be there because we've got some really special things planned for you at that time. So I'm going to show you two videos now, and I know that's not uh, generally the most exciting way to start out a presentation, but I want to show you two videos just to give you some content because Morris and I, neither one, have had a whole bunch of time to talk to you um, about Mr. Agam and some of his achievements. The first video is a bit dated, but it has a wonderful selection of great visual images in it. And when I say dated, I think it was probably shot to VHS, so I just want you to realize it's not going to be the HDTV you're used to in your home. Um, but then the second video is actually a, a very new video from uh, YouTube. So all in, I'm asking your, for your attention for about five or six minutes on these videos. I think they'll be well worth it to give context before we bring in Ms. Durgan. Ladies and gentlemen, are you excited for our day today? Yeah. All right, so in the back of the room, we have a gentleman who had no idea as of Wednesday of this week just what he was signing up for. He's the man with the beard here in the back, and I think, and I'm not sure on this, he's the only man in all of Denmark with brown hair. But anyway, um, his name is Alex, and since Wednesday, he's basically been working full-time for Park West. Alex is right back here. Would you give Alex a big round of applause? So um, anyway, Alex, uh, I want to go with the video from the memory stick first, please. and 12 feet high. Agam has again achieved a dazzling combination of color, movement, music, water, fire, and computerized technology. What I'm trying to do is to create a constant becoming. Yehovah, the evil meaning of life, a constant becoming. And the most constant thing in life is life, and life is a constant change. Thank <laughs> you. 